not not quite as climactic as Happy New Year's, but you know, welcome to church. So, whether you're joining us online or here in person, we thank you for being here today. And, and uh, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Amen. Isn't it a great day to be alive? Yes. 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 Uh, we have a special day tomorrow, so spouses, I'm, I'm talking to both sides of the house, mostly men, um, if you haven't done your duty and your deeds, your good deed of going out and getting your <coughs> special someone a uh, Valentine's Day card or something thereabouts or a special something, um, you still have time to do that today, you're still off the hook. And of course, we have that big sporting event this afternoon, so you have to kind of plan for that in between times. So you have a window of opportunity to redeem yourselves ahead of time. See how that works? Isn't that a great thing? Something to celebrate, right? Bruce, you're shaking your head. You're like, He's talking to me. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking to myself, too. So um, We have another great week ahead here. Getting very excited. The timeline is ticking down, and we we're talking about that again. So, <clears throat> Wednesday night, we will be having our study group and our prayer meetings here at 7 o'clock, right in the same room. And uh, look forward to seeing you there. Orange Track Racing yesterday got off to its season 17 start, and we had an absolutely phenomenal start from what I hear. Uh, I was, I was down after traveling and, and uh, uh, couldn't be here, so, uh, but I, I hear it was a great, great time. Next Saturday, we're going to be having a walkthrough at our new building at 10 o'clock. Um, so I think the game plan is right now is we're going to meet down here at 10 o'clock, kind of get a lay of the land, figure out what we have, then go over to the new building, take a look over there, kind of see where everything's going to fit in at and everything make a game plan for the move. Um, our first first official thing is going to be having movie night. So make sure you invite a lot of people. We're gonna be seeing God Bless the Broken Road, and that'll be on March 5th at six o'clock. Doors open at 5.30. So wanna make sure uh, everybody's gonna be able to be there. Of course, we always have popcorn and hot dogs and drinks and brownie bites. Brownie bites, yes. Something to look forward to. Come for the brownie bites, stay for the movie. What can I say? <laughs> so our first service in the new location is going to be on March 6th, so that's Sunday. So movie on Saturday, first service in the new location on March 6th. So a lot of fun things happening. Going to be a busy time. We've got to move in the meantime. And so we're going to try and get that planned out in the process. Um, so it should be a, an awesome, awesome time. And uh, hopefully we can all get together and, and just make it flow very smoothly and, <laughs> and transition very well. So well, let's go to God in prayer and start this off right, shall we? Come Holy Spirit and join us here this morning. Lord, fill us full of your spirit today. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak to our ears. Let us hear your message. Let us hear your words. Let us rejoice in this message that we hear today. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all of the great things you do in our lives each and every day. We thank you for this special opportunity to gather hey, together here this morning and to worship your holy name. Lord, fill us full of your word today, full of your wisdom and reveal your truths to us as we hear our messages in song and in word today. Lord, Thank you for this time that we are gathered together here and able to uh, fellowship with one another and edify each other, lift us up as brothers and sisters in Christ. So thank you, Lord, for all of these wonderful things that you do and the blessings you give us each and every day, and especially for this opportunity to worship you here freely and openly this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, before we get started today, I read something this week. Wow. <laughs> 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 Big words and all, I tackled the whole thing. 
But uh, I read that, you know, just it, today is Super Bowl Sunday, but that our service on Sunday morning should be every bit as important as the football game this afternoon. Okay, so when the pastor gets up here to preach, okay, we should be as excited about what he's going to say as the team is about what the coach is going to say. All right? So, after the game is over with and the, and the coach wins, all right, he gets a Gatorade bath. So, Terry is preaching today, and he does a really good job. We shouldn't treat him any less than the winning coach, really. <laughs> Man, I'm glad it's your day. <laughs> You're willing to take one for the team, right? Yeah. <laughs> Diane asked, I said lemon lime, Gatorade would be fine. <laughs> Just not the red stuff, it stains. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we do thank and praise you for this opportunity to come together as your children, to come together as family, our family in Christ, Lord. And, and we just, uh, we're just in awe of everything you do each and every day. Uh, we talk a lot about our prayer chains here at, at Grace Street, and uh, there's always a new prayer on that chain, but there's also a new answer every day, too. And Lord, we just thank and praise you. We invite the Holy Spirit to dwell with, with us today, Lord, uh, whether you're here in person or if you're online. Uh, we ask that the Holy Spirit would be right there with you, and, and uh, we love you, Lord, and, and we just want to lift our voice to you.
You know, this next song speaks a lot about, um, that was me. <laughs> this next song speaks a lot about uh, who Christ chooses to use. And it's not always who we, we think he would choose. Uh, he chooses the humble and raises them high. He chooses the weak and makes them strong. Uh, he doesn't always choose the equipped, but he always equips the chosen.
you're going to talk first. <laughs> My short message this morning is uh, Our call to worship today comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. And it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, that new has come. And all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled himself, us to himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling himself with the world, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting us the message of, of reconciliation. So when we read about this, the, the thing about it is there's two parts to this scripture that are very, very important to understand that take place when we become believers in Christ. And first, we're not who we once were. We're not who we once were. Behold, the new has come. The old has passed away. How many in here like change? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the only thing constant in life is change. And so if you don't like change, do you don't know, like life along with it? They kind of go hand in hand. So you need to prepare your hearts to be changed. And when we come in as a believer in Christ, sometimes we come in unprepared to change our lives. And so we tend to kind of resist that, you know, okay, God, but yeah, let's do it my way instead. And we'll just kind of ease into this situation. Uh, but God doesn't work that way, does he? <clears throat> no, no. It says, the old has passed away. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. And behold, the new has come. We aren't who we once were. The old has passed away. The old way of living. The old way of serving God. When Christ came into the world, the old way of serving God went out the window. Change came. Whether we were a Jew or a Gentile, the old legal boundaries were broken down. All the external things, such as riches and honors and learning and knowledge, all the things that were important in the Jewish society that day, were torn down. The former sentiments of religion are given up. Behold, the old has passed away. The new has come. Perhaps more importantly, it's the message of reconciliation that comes along with being a believer in Christ, with what Jesus did in his work on the cross for us. See, we get a fresh start. Behold, all things become new. See, there's a new course of life, both of faith and of holiness. Christ is reconciling you to God, and your past sins are no longer counted against you. Period. Leave the past in the past. God has a special future plan for you, and if you drag the past along with you, you don't get to see that future because you're tied to the things of the past. You can't go back and change the past. You can't undo the sins that you committed. But God doesn't care. Through Christ, he put all of that behind you. It's time you did the same. I told you this was going to be short, but <laughs> you are released from the past and a new beginning and a new way of serving God through Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. God's grace and mercies are unending. His love for you is eternal. You are truly, truly a new creation. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Is that a reason to celebrate? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have something to be happy about. Christ changed us from the inside out. We 
we are a new creation. Grasp onto that new creation. Live it out through Christ. And let us pray. Gracious Lord, thank you that you have changed us from the inside out. That you have gotten rid of all of our old baggage, all of our old junk that we carried around with us. Lord, that you have set us free from the bondage of sin and death. And that in you, there is new life. There is a new creation. I am new in you. Lord, help us live that out day to day. Father God, we thank you for the message that Pastor Terry has prepared for us today that you put on his heart to share with us today. Because he knows and we know that someone here needs to hear this message and it might just be me. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for these opportunities to worship you. I asked him this morning, did you see my second email yesterday, right after I sent the first one? <laughs> he looked at me and said, no. The mouth, I um, changed the title of the sermon. <laughs> Change. It happens. It struck me, at, at first it was, I was, it was going to be living changed lives, but then it struck me as like changed lives. So our living of those changed lives change. We talk about change and, and God's renewing. And, and this morning I'm, I'm looking out and, and just a moment ago, I don't know if y'all saw this whoosh of snow. I thought it was snowing again. They were just coming <laughs> off of the, the top of the roofs and stuff. But it covers up our sin. It's like, it's like what Isaiah wrote in uh, chapter 1, 18. It says, come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. Change lives. I said, God changes our lives. And in so many ways, and so many times throughout our lives, things change. And some of those changes bring fresh starts. So we just, I can't even believe it, we're already in February. When I was thinking about this sermon, it was like January. And the beginning of the year, right? It's like something new. So, new year, we think of resolutions. We're going to eat healthier. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to spend more time with family. More time with God. Um, I'm doing pretty good on the last one. The other ones, i got to work on yet. But some of you may have, have a different uh, newness coming along. Maybe you got a new home. Maybe you've moved. Or maybe you're looking to move to a new home. Like, we're getting ready to move to our new church home. And as you're doing something like that, you're going through your stuff going, I don't need this. I haven't used it in quite a while. Oh, I just had a vision of our basement. Never mind. It's, it's full of things that we have not used in a long time. But deciding whether we're going to keep it or get rid of it. So when we get ready to move the church, we're going to go into our storage area, which is, there's an office space in the back here. We're going to look at something. We're going to go, is that something we need? Is that something we're going to use? And then if you're moving yourself, and I know this for us personally, you know, we're getting up in age, and we will be hiring if we ever move again. But um, for yeah. us, I think about the most that we're going to do here is we might uh, rent a U-Haul so that we get things moved. And then there's the opportunity to get everything situated once you've moved. We have reconfigured this space, I don't know how many times, and we've added some things. And yesterday when we had Orange Track, I looked at Diane and I said, we finally get a setup for Orange Track where we can put the maximum number of people that we can possibly get in here, and it's our last one here. 
Oh wow, well, we lived, we learned something new. Maybe the new thing that you've got coming up is a new job. Maybe you're having to prepare a resume and start looking for something else. I mean, we've, we're living in, in a time period that people are calling their great resignation because people are leaving their jobs in droves and, and looking for something else. But as maybe you've gotten laid off. I have a friend. I actually went to school with him, high school with him, and he, put, he posted this, this post on Facebook the other day, and I felt so bad for him as I'm reading this. He had just gotten a new job earlier this uh, last year after getting laid off from the previous one because of COVID. And there's a massive layoff across the organization. It's a nationwide uh, organization that he works for. And so he had his students picked out for the three interviews next week. He was, he was I mean, positive looking forward and, and seeing what he was gonna do. At five minutes to five, his phone rings and it says the name of the business, vice president. And in the 60 second call, he was told they were, he was too important. They found the money and he had, we'll see you on Monday. So change, but not knowing what's happening. He, and I know he's a believer, he lives a changed life and be, lives are changed because Regardless of what it is, whether it's the new year, the new home, the new job, maybe it's a new relationship, whatever it is, regardless of that, getting started and doing these things can be difficult. Mark and I were talking this morning, all right, so we've decided we're going to meet next Saturday at 10 o'clock. Are we going to be here or there? And, you know, he, he, Mark already covered that during announcements, but it's like, we got to figure this out. What are we going to do? And then when we get occupancy on the first, and so how are we going to get everything moved? And Mark's... I know Mark's going to be traveling part of that week, and I know that's got him concerned. God's got it. We're going to get there. Because all of the challenges that we come across are opportunities. And the problem with challenges, though, some of those challenges of our past can take a toll on our lives. Think about the challenges that you've gone through in your life, and how many of those, when you weren't walking with the Lord, how, what was the toll that they took? Versus the toll that they take when you're walking with the Lord. There's still things that you go through, but it's definitely not as difficult. Now, a few weeks ago, uh, Pastor Mark gave us a message talking about newness and, and refresh, getting started. And he said, it's not how we start, but how we finish. And that just resonated with it. It's been, for the last five weeks, it's been spinning around in my head. It's not how... We start with how we finish. So when we talk about living changed lives to change lives, it, it's certainly not about a new year or a new home or a new job or any of that. It's about living a changed life because of Jesus. That's why. It's like everything else, though, the hardest part is getting started. I have talked to so many people who want to know Jesus. They, the first thing is, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the things I've done, the things I've said. How or where do I start? How could Jesus want me? Listen to what the prophet says. Isaiah 43, 18 and 18. And it's from the New International Version. It says this, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do, do you not perceive it? I'm making way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. This goes back a little bit. We've got to kind of go back for some context here. Mark and I talk about this. Read around it. Don't, don't just take it. I'm not taking this verse and trying to do it out of context. It's when we think, go back to verse 14. The Lord here is promising us victory. Isaiah tells us that the Lord will send an army against Babylon. That's the first part of this section. And then he reminds us of what the Lord did to the mighty army of Egypt. And you can, I can just see it. They're all in the middle of that dry ground that the Egyptians just, or the uh, Israelites just walked across and the waters come down. He took care of them. And, and when he tells us to forget the former things and not to dwell in the past, he is telling us that the new 
thing the Lord is going to do, what he is going to do in the future, cannot be compared to these things. That's what he's talking about. Do not compare, uh, dwell on the past, do not uh, forget the former things, but don't dwell on them. He's also reminding us that we should not dwell on those bad things. The last couple of years have been pretty strenuous, and it's kind of hard not to dwell on some of those things, but if we see them through a different lens, put on God's lens, and look at it through that, there's so much more to see. When, we, when the pandemic hit, Mark and I were like, eh, what are we going to do now? And we swiftly went to online services. It forced us to do something we'd been talking about, and had not pulled the trigger on. But we did it, and we continue to do that because there's still people that can't get out for whatever reason. Now they can join us. Now they can watch it later on if they can't be with us today. At, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. At, at work, we went to remote learning, or remote working very quickly. Prior to that, we have four call centers across the country, and there was animosity between those call centers. <laughs> call center here? Yeah, we're the best. Those other three, they don't compare. They don't know how to do the job like we do. You can fill in the rest of those blanks. But because of the pandemic forcing us to work remotely, those lines disappeared. And we began working as one. And so instead of being a fractured team, we can't come to find out who those other people truly are. And I was talking to Mark about something specific to work and about someone at work and um, somebody I've come to rely on when I'm doing training classes. And would have never thought that. He's in Knoxville. So it, it's not dwelling on the bad things, but taking a moment and reflecting on all the good things that have come from it. So let's start then by living a life of thanksgiving. So let's live life with thanksgiving. The Psalms are a great place to start this. Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5, say this, Shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and His faithfulness continues to each generation. And the psalmist is calling each of us into worship. When we do a call to worship each Sunday, it's, there's a reason for it. And, and this is part of it. We are called into worship with the Lord. And if we notice in that first verse, what does it say? It says, all the earth. Not, not this little group of people called the Israelites. All the earth. And, and to shout it out with joy. And nowhere in this psalm does it say anything about what your situation in life is right now. I don't say anything about it. It just says worship. And, and we're not being forced into that. It's simply a song about giving thanks to God for who He is. And what better way to do that but in thanksgiving? David tells us to acknowledge that the Lord is God. So how can we do that? We can shout praises to Him. Praise Him helps us to do that every week through song. By appreciating what God created. Oh, it is snowing. God created more snow. But soon we'll be seeing the trees, the leaves on the trees and the flowers come out. And we'll be able to even more appreciate what God has created. And we can also do this by thanking Him for all that He has done for us. Whether it's through family and friends, and yes, some of them will drive you crazy, but we still need to be thankful. Through your job, even if you're currently unemployed, there are things to be thankful for your health. But even if you're sick, there's things to be thankful. We can do this by accepting God's authority in 
every aspect of our lives, not just the ones we want to pick and choose. We can do it by agreeing with the encouragement and guidance he gives us through his word and by expressing how thankful we are for his never-ending, unfailing love. And he proved that out when he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. May not change some of your circumstance here on earth, but it changes your eternity. And in verse 3 of this psalm, we are reminded that he made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. God made us. We didn't make ourselves. He created the, the way that we are brought into this earth. Even though, it, you know, well, my mom is the one that gave birth to me. Why? It's because God gave her that ability. Being a sheep means that God is going to guide us and protect us. And in thanking God, we can realize his power, his presence, and what he provides us. It helps us even when life gets hard. So think about it. When we are praising God, it's so much harder to sit and wallow in self-pity. It's so much harder when we're praising God to not have them to have negative thoughts. So let's praise God. It also changes the way that we look at life in general when we are looking to God first. So instead of being stuck in our own little world where pride, greed, idolatry, amongst many other things, we then are focused on the Creator. Without God, if we lose everything, there's nothing left. Not even hope. Job lost everything, but he didn't lose hope. But with God, we could lose everything, as Job did, and still have God and all that he gives us. And what happened to Job? Well, if you go to the end of the book of Job, he is given a double portion. So for this reason, God is worthy of being worshipped. He is worthy of our praise. We can't go through the motions. God's going to know who's going through the motions and who's not. That's not for us to figure out. That, that's between you and God. But we need to enter God's presence. We need to do it willingly and we need to do it joyfully. And remember, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. And we need to have that heavenly focus. We need to surrender to God and thank Him through prayer. So let's continue that throughout the, the up, upcoming year and the things that we have coming, that we start living life in surrender. What does that mean? We need to surrender the past. We need to take time. We need to pause. We need to reflect. We need to, as we, every time we go to the store, Diane does this, so it just, just pops in my head, we need to stop and smell the roses. And this time of year, there's a lot of roses to stop and smell. The stores are full of them. <laughs> For, for that thing that somebody was talking about tomorrow. What, what was that again? Oh, yeah, by Valentine's Day, because the guys don't remember that very well. <laughs> but we just talked about giving, about living life by giving thanks. And as you pause and reflect, you, you could be reminded of past hurts. Here's the thing you have to deal with those feelings must deal with them. If you don't and you sweep them under the proverbial rug, then what gets under the rug with it, that it will eventually come out. It's all that bitterness and the other things that we let creep in there. Instead, we need to choose the freedom that comes through forgiveness. And I think of the, the total forgiveness study that we did, what was that, about four years ago? Yeah. Might have to pull that one out again mm -hmm. once we get done with uh, the Truth Project. But think about forgiveness, and, and think of this, this theme of forgiveness, and remember what happened with Joseph and his brothers. Joseph forgave them for what they had done to him. He brought his family to Egypt to take care of them. And what was in the back of his brothers' minds the whole time? Oh, he's going to take this out on us. He's going to get his revenge. And when Jacob's father, or when their father Jacob died, they were absolutely positive that Joseph's anger would come out and he would retaliate. 
And let's listen to what it says in Genesis 50, 16 to 20. He says, So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed, they're taking, <laughs> they're trying to get ahead of it. That he said, they instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you, for their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. Here's that forgiveness. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. They then took the step of surrender, which became the very first step towards them accepting the forgiveness that Joseph offered to them, that he showed them. And this is not the typical way that we understand surrender. If you're like me and you hear the word surrender, you think of somebody going like, Flag, you know, the Revolutionary War. Yeah, we get that. Civil War, they're waving the white flag. No. Surrendering to God means that we are giving our lives to Him so that He can help us to heal from all that hurt and pain. Surrendering to God means we are accepting His love, His mercy, His grace, and His forgiveness. It means allowing God to take care of us. He's doing that there is nothing for us to be afraid of no nothing man can do to you even killing you can compare to his care for us and we should not be afraid the world expects us to pay the consequences for our actions God loves us God doesn't condone our sin but he has taken away the penalty for our sin Judging, that's for him to do, not for you and me. Revenge will not make you feel better. It leaves only more pain and more bitterness in your heart. And surrendering to God also means that we are leaving those things in his hands. When you surrender to God, you are laying all your stuff at his feet. Mark talks about bringing the, your luggage and putting it at the foot of the cross. Turn around and walking away, leaving it. Don't go back and get it. Just leave it there. It also means that we know that we need God's help. Forgiveness is something as followers of Jesus that we must do every day, whether we want to or not. Paul writes in Colossians 3, 13 and 15, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ, rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. See, the key here is in forgiving others is remembering how much God has forgiven you. Ephesians 4, 32 through 5, 2 says this, Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you let others continue to hurt you, though. It's Forgiveness also is not always a conversation that you will have with someone. The conversation I had with my daughter about her mom. I said, I, long ago I forgave your mom, and I told her this before her, uh, when she, several years before her wedding. I, I said, if I ever see your mom again, if I ever talk to your mom again, then I will ask for her forgiveness from my part. And then I did see her at the wedding, and I did ask for that forgiveness. And it was given, and she also asked for forgiveness. And 
that was good. Surrendering to God. Living in peace means that we are working together in love despite our differences. It's unfortunate, though, that something that comes with offenses and hurts of the past also bring labels with them. And as you're surrendering to God and pray for forgiveness, also pray for the hurtful labels of the past to be removed. I remember the labels that I got in school as a kid. I've given those to the Lord. I'm ready to start living with new labels. So in creating a new you, you it can be exhausting. That's why we need not the world to help, but God to help. Now there's always going to be that new fad. There's always going to be that new diet. There's always going to be that new way to exit. There's always going to be this new way to do this or that. And, and you'll hear on, on advertisements or see on advertisements say, get this in. You fill, go ahead and just fill in that blank. And you will be a new person. Read this book and you will be a new person. The problem is, is we're struggling for acceptance by the world and not by God. We don't want those labels, but it happens. And labels that people give us can hurt. And as I was writing this, the labels from the past, those came through, but they didn't hurt so much. They were just things that people said. Now, labels can be helpful. When you go to the store and you look at the, the product <laughs> you're gonna buy, you wanna read that label. Am I allergic to any of these things? Oh, too many carbs, put it back. Those are just some of the things where labels can be helpful. They can help you when you're washing your clothes, too, you know. You don't want that shred. I had this beautiful wool sweater as I was a kid, and somebody threw it in the dryer. And this adult-sized sweater became a cabbage patch-sized sweater. So I gave it to my daughter for a cabbage patch doll. Sometimes we minimize ourselves when it comes to labels. So think of this. Listen to how this is phrased. I'm a college student rings much differently than if someone says, I'm just a college student. The first one is a basic description. The second one feels like it cheapens the description. I'm just. Labels are often overgeneralized, they're restrictive, they're inaccurate, they come with assumptions, they can be negative, and they don't even highlight our best qualities. As Christians, our true identity is in who God says you are. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 19. Mark read from the uh, English Standard Version, I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation it hits a little bit differently in both. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. See, we are brand new. We're not reformed. We're not rehabilitated. We're not re-educated. We are recreated. We are new creations. He's made us new. Because of Jesus, we get to start a new life. We no longer are a part of this world. The world is not our master. We have a new master. It's not a superficial change. It's not just something you're going to see on the outside. It's something that goes directly into your core. The world will continue to try to label you. But those labels don't matter anymore. We are not about our past. We are about who we are now in that new identity. We are who God says we are. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are loved. And you are forgiven. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We no longer have to fear the world by following Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us. The labels God gives us are the ones that come that we can read in Galatians 5. It says, Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness, self-control. These are labels that God gives us, not the world. Do they match? They will if you let God help you. Ask God for help so that before anything else, people will see you as a true child of God. And then ask God to help you make a difference through those gifts that he has given you. So let's make a difference with our gifts. Let's do something new. Let's, we've got a clean slate. The possibilities are endless. As I think of our new space, the possibilities are endless. We, have, we don't have an elevator shaft in the middle of the room. The possibilities are endless. We have a parking lot, not street parking, where there's no place to park on a Sunday morning. Possibilities are endless. And again, I go back to what Mark told us here a few weeks ago. It's not how we start, but how we finish. So when you think about the future, what do you want to see? For your life, for the life of our church, what do you want to see? God's already there. He's just waiting for us to catch up. And, and as you're getting there, as you're getting, we're getting to that future, will you have made each and every one of the divine appointments that God has set before you each and every day? Are you ready to make a difference in this world for the kingdom? I go back to, to Mark's message last week. Is the church relevant? If we were to close today, would anybody notice and would anybody care? Whether you realize it or not, God has placed certain things, certain people in your path, and he has given you the opportunities to fulfill his purpose for you. We all have our own unique gifts and talents. You've been placed in this time, and sometimes I always wonder, why didn't I get, why wasn't I born earlier? Because growing up, all I listened to was beach music. I mean, a decade before uh, I would have started listening to music, this music came out. And, and it's like, but God put me in this time and in this place, in the specific place that he did, for a specific reason, which reminds me of Esther. You know, after learning about the decree that it called for the de uh, death of all the Jews, Mordecai reached out to, to Esther, who was Xerxes' wife and his queen. And she was like, mm, I don't know about this. She didn't want to go. She didn't want to do it. She didn't want to die. But Esther 4, 13 and 14 says, Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't you think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. See, instead of worrying about uh, you know, what it was going to happen to her, she responded to Mordecai to have the Jews pray and fast for her. We pray a lot here at Grace Street. It's part of our DNA. It's part of who we are. And in doing that, in that praying and fasting, they chose to use what God had given them to save the Jews. That divine appointment that God had given her, she went out, she met it. God's purpose for them was then fulfilled for Mordecai, for Esther, and the rest of the Jews. They surrendered, they put aside the labels of the world, and they used their gifts and talents. And then in the end, they gave thanks to God for all that he had done. Paul reminds us of this in Romans 8, 28. He says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So as you begin each new day, you have a fresh start. You, you're living a changed life that will change lives. You've been given an, an, something new. What are you going to do with it? In fact, it's not just when you wake up in the morning. It's you get up, you get dressed, and you go out. You've got a new start as you leave. What are you going to do with it? As soon as you get to work and you meet your coworkers, if you're working in, at the office, when you go to talk to them, you have a fresh start with them that day. What are you going to do with it? 
When you go to be with family, you have a fresh start, it's a fresh time, what are you going to do about it? And along the way, as you're living a changed life that will change lives, be sure to thank God for everything that he has given to you. Father God, we just thank you for giving us a changed life that it's something that we can't do. We can't earn it. We can't do anything. It's a free gift that you give us, Father. We thank you for that. Father, it is our prayer that through this ministry, through whether it's a, a sermon on a Sunday, whether it's a Bible study, whether it's Orange Track, our movie nights, or it's just getting outside the four walls, Father. Let us use that fresh start. Let's use our changed lives so that we can change lives. Father, you have done so much amazing things in our lives. Let us, let others see the hope that you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for that message, Pastor Terry. As I was sitting there listening to the message this morning, as I was Preparing myself for our time of communion today, I thought about uh, when he was talking about the labels that uh, people put on us. Usually when people put a, a label on us, it's not something positive. And, you know, they, they put a label on Jesus when they took him to the cross. They made a sign that said, King of the Jews, and they were trying to make fun of him. But see, here's the thing is they missed the whole point. He was king of the world. King of the world. They were, they were far too short-sighted. He was king of the world. So uh, what was meant to bring shame was actually a proclamation of their short-sightedness. Jesus was the king of the world. And he took our sins upon him. And he wanted us to have changed lives. He didn't want us to be bound by those things of our past. He didn't want us bound by the laws that a whole bunch of people put into place to rule their lives and keep them down and keep them oppressed. He said, no, I have a new life for you. You are a new creation. And he took that to the cross for for each and every one of us. He took our sins. He took the shame of the world. He took the labels of the world to the cross. And he died to give us salvation, freedom, unending and eternal freedom for any and all of us to live out changed lives through him through his words. So as we come into our time of communion this morning, we need to think about exactly what this means. He took on the sin and the shames of the world. His body took a beating like no other. He took the abuse. He took the beating that we deserve. We should be on the cross. But he took our place. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. The sins of the world that I have taken on for you. Later on in the meal, he took a cup and he blessed it and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins the blood of Jesus that washes away these sins of the world. Our sin. So as we come into this time this morning, I want you to think about the life that you have had the ability to change because of Jesus, because of the sacrifice of the cross. The body broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God.
gracious Lord, we can never begin to repay the gifts that you have given us. The gifts of reconciliation, the gifts of life, and life eternal in and through you. The gift of the Holy Spirit living in us and dwelling amongst us each and every day, guiding our hearts, ordering our steps. Lord, help us to put down our pride. Help us to put down and surrender all of the things that would keep us away from this life that you intend for us to have, that you suffered and died to set us free from. Let us take that life and live it out each and every day. Your precious like to start by thanking God that he is always there to listen to our prayers for help with healing and pain of all kinds. I thank you for all the prayers set up for me this week. I thank you for listening to everything that, um, you know, all our needs all the time. And that we're a family that everybody gets together and through the uh, messages and emails and text messages, we're always there for each other, and I praise God. I just thank Him so much for all that. And I thank God for uh, listening to our daily struggles of the mind and the heart, for always sending help to those in need, for putting people into our path exactly at the right time when we need someone to talk to or to pray for us. God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. Thank you, God, for giving us love, peace, and joy that passes all understanding. Thank you for unconditional love and forgiveness of sin every single day. So let us pray. We thank you, Jesus, that you are always with us and you are always there to hear our prayers. You are such a great God and so worthy of praise. And we thank you that um, you will just give uh, peace and comfort to Bruce and Shannon and their family after the passing of his mother this week. We're so thankful that you brought them back to church this morning to, to be with us and praise your name. And Father God, just be with Mark. I thank you that you brought him back this week um, and that um, you will watch over him in his travels and keep him safe always for he'll be traveling quite a bit in the, next, in the future here. I pray for his hand that you will supersede any surgery that he's going to have on his thumb and his hand, and that you will heal it, Lord God. And um, if he has to have surgery, just I pray that the doctors will uh, put it together correctly and that he won't lose mobility, Lord Jesus. I pray this in your holy name, for you are God, and we just thank you for who you are. And we just uh, love you, Lord Jesus, and thank you and praise your holy name this morning, that you are always with us, and that you bring your Holy Spirit into this house each and every time we gather. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much, Pastor Terry. Uh, it was a great message, definitely worthy of a Gatorade bath. <laughs> but, uh, I'll give you a break, though. <laughs> What's your grandson's name? Chase. Jake. Jake? Jake. Chase. 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 Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chase. Happy birthday to you. by yourself. Let's get the whole congregation. Right. <laughs> yeah. exactly right. uh, let's go to the, the Lord and lift our voices, shall we? Thank you. 
Amen. One more, Mark. One more. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> I just enjoyed this so much. <laughs> this morning this is this is talking this really spoke to me this morning about how um, living a changed life changes lives and this is about that in a, in a little bit different way it shows how God works for our good through our lives it's, this is a story about Lord Radstock who was staying in a hotel in Norway in the mid 19th century and he heard a little child playing the piano downstairs in the hallway she's probably playing like I would because I can't play the piano it was, um, she was making a terrible noise that says plink, plonk, plink. 
that would have been me, was driving him mad. And then a man came and sat beside her and began playing alongside her, filling in the gaps. The result was the most beautiful music. That's what God does to us. We sit through life and we go plink, plunk, plunk, and God comes in, comes in right beside us, walks beside us, he fills in, the, fills in those gaps. Amen. Well, the result of that was this beautiful music, and Lord Bradsock would later discover that the man playing alongside the girl was the girl's father, Alexander Broden, composer of the opera Prince Igor. God calls you into a relationship that involves cooperation with him. The Christian faith is primarily about what has been done for you by God in Christ. However, we are not mere spectators. Go back to your sermon last week. We're not mere spectators. We are called to respond. God involves you in his plans. God comes and sits alongside you and in all things works for the good. He takes our plink, plunk, plink, plunk, plunk, and makes something beautiful out of our lives. God, you know our thoughts and our desires. You know what we want and what we ultimately need. And while we don't always get what we want, Father, you always make sure that we have what we need. Our life is not our own. It is yours, Father, and we give that over to you. Help us to act on the thoughts and desires that turn us closer to you, that help us take our changed lives and change lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Um, I was telling Lori a little bit earlier um, that uh, I have a conflict now on Thursday nights, so music rehearsal is going to change nights, but I want to kind of coincide that with uh, going into the new building. Uh, darn it. I'm going to kind of coincide I thought maybe you that. filled it up in the middle of the service. Coincide that with the uh, move, and so maybe you've been thinking about joining us and the praise team, and maybe the only thing in your way was you weren't available That's Thursday right. nights. So message me and let me know what would work for you, and when we put together a new rehearsal day, uh, we will uh, certainly take that into consideration. 